I'm Randy Owen, owner and founder of ThermalWorks. It's about a week before Christmas, and we're here today to talk about Christmas dinner and how the Thermapen can bring you near perfection in a Christmas roast. We've got a boneless rib roast that we're going to do today. This is about a four bone roast, maybe a little more, about 11 inches in length. We have tied it in a circular way so the mass is a little more even. It will heat more evenly through and be a little more even in color and doneness from one side to the other. Now, I am not a trained chef. I do know a little bit about temperature measurement and heat flow. And what I know about cooking has come from watching television pro programs, Good Eats by Alton Brown, America's Test Kitchen with Christopher Kimball. And today we're going to follow some of their tips for a beautiful rib roast. Now this has been on the counter for about three hours, uh, equilibrating we would say. Uh, thawed, coming right out of the fridge, it was probably 30, 33 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. You can see now in the center it's 43, a few inches closer to the end, 45, back at this end, 44. So we're fairly even throughout from one side to the other. We've already rubbed it with olive oil and uh, uh, rubbed it with herbs, uh, a coarse kosher salt and fresh ground pepper. And we're ready to brown it. We will brown the roast on the stove before putting it in the oven. Uh, you'll see one of the reasons why in a minute. So let's get that ready. We'll preheat the pan. Pan's starting to heat. We'll add just a little dribble of olive oil so we don't have any sticking. And there is, of course, plenty of fat still tied to the outside of the rib roast. Now we'll let that heat. Wait till the oil is just about smoking, and then we'll insert the roast for browning. Okay, pan's hot enough. Ah, here it's starting to sear. Then we'll give that a good browning on all sides, turn it as we go, and it'll be ready for the oven in a few minutes. Okay, we've got it there. It's browned just lightly all over, took just a few moments. We're going to take it out and set it on the rack. We've browned it in the pan we plan to cook it in, just so that we save on doing dishes. We'll wipe out the excess oil. Okay. Roast is in the pan, and we're ready to go. Now, we've only just barely browned the outside. We don't want to cook any of the meat. The idea is to get the meat medium rare from end to end without a wide grace uh, band surrounding the meat. So we've browned only the outer layer with high heat, ready to go to the oven. All right, we're ready to put the roast in the oven. We have it set to a fairly low temperature of 200 Fahrenheit. It is set to convection roast. You can do this in a conventional oven. It would take just a little bit longer. The convection process does create a more even heating process in the oven, but at low temperatures that's less crucial anyway uh, because there's less risk that you will overheat or burn the roast in particular parts. Uh, you'll want to set the roast so that it's more or less in the center of the oven. Uh, we're ready now to put it in. And we'll come back and check it later with the thermopen to see how the heating is going. Okay, it's been three hours. Uh, it's time to check again. I think we're, we're fairly close to being done. Got a thermopen ready. 123, 122. I think we'll take it out now. Uh, during resting, it will come up. The ends are a little bit uh, more uh, medium, but we're still uh, in a good range. Let's take it out and set it on the counter. Now, 
Let's talk a little bit about the thermopen and its ability to measure temperature. Um, you'll notice on the green one here, we've taken the tenths of a degree off the display. This is a simple setting you can do. It's found in the battery compartment. You'll notice when we insert the thermopen in the roast, it's almost instant. It doesn't even take our advertised three seconds. It zooms right to the, the temperature and barely moves. Perfect for measuring the roast across its length. You can test a piece of meat in several places for doneness instantly. The red one here, we have set with the tenths of a degree activated. The truth is this thermopen is just as fast as the green one, but you will see a little more activity because of the tenths changing. We're reading about the same. But you can see the display changes a little more than it does on the green one. Let's try a little experiment. We'll position both these thermopen probes in the same place. The red one shows the tenth of a degree, the green one the whole degrees. They're reading approximately the same, rounded up about 75. Let's insert them both in the roast, same depth, almost the same place. The truth is they've reached the reading almost at the same time. But the red one will seem to change a little bit more because the tenths of a degree are moving. Now, this isn't the way we calibrate thermopens in the laboratory. We use a precision controlled stable temperature bath that is uniform throughout the liquid to 0 0.005 degrees Celsius or better. A roast, of course, is a solid, and these probe tips are probably about one degree apart uh, where they're positioned right now. Not the best place to calibrate. Here's another interesting lesson that we should, should take a peek at. The meat will not be the same temperature through the whole depth. As I insert it further, the temperature will change. As we come back out through the center of the roast, the temperature will get lower and then higher again as we come near the top surface that was closer to the heat during the cooking process. You can see, particularly with the tents activated, the display doesn't lock in, which we wouldn't want it to do. We want it to tell us exactly what the temperature is where the tip of the probe is at the present time. Now let's look at it with the green one. We have less information in this display because we've turned the tenths off, but it still functions very much the same way. We go deeper, the temperature changes, we back out through the center, toward the top where it's higher, and we see where the meat is a little more done. That's part of the beauty of the thermopen, the accurate and fast measurement the sensitivity will tell you more about the food you're cooking than any other instant read thermometer. Okay, let's tent the roast loosely. We'll be looking for seven or eight degree rise in temperature during the, the resting process as the juices settle back into the fibers of the meat. This way they won't spill out as readily on the cutting board when we go to carve. All right, so we finished the rest. Looks like we've come to a final temperature of 129, 130 maybe, 128 at that end, 131. Now we'll carve. It smells wonderful. A nice, consistent, rare to medium rare color throughout. No overcooked band, beautiful, terrific consistency. There you go. Ready for every meat lover. If you like it better done,
Cook it a little longer. Shoot for maybe 130 before pulling it from the oven. It'll rise to 138, 140 if you prefer a little more medium. There you go. The beauty of having a Thermopen at Christmas dinner time.